today's Wednesday, it's the 17th of April, it's 2024, and I haven't brought you any news recently, so I thought I'd uh, catch up with a little bit of the local news, particularly news that interests me. And uh, just scanning through, the first thing that caught my eye was that employment in the tourism sector in the Balearic Islands has increased uh, by 10,000 workers in March, just in March. Uh, this is really quite significant. Uh, total number of affiliates in that, if you look at the whole of Spain, has reached 2,739,000. That's 13.1% of the total. Um, so it just emphasises the importance of tourism within the tourist uh, within the labour sector of Mallorca and uh, Spain in general. Births continue to grow and uh, 5% uh, increase in the Balearic births. There were 1,000, almost 1,500 children born uh, just so far this year, and uh, that's an increase in five of 5% on what it was last year. Uh, it doesn't actually uh, appear to be higher than the number of deaths. There were in fact, until the end of March, 2,369 deaths. Um, so the number of births is not compensating for the number of deaths. Um, migrants, I see in the British press, they're always complaining about the number of migrants that have arrived across the Straits and uh, they've got this crazy plan to send people to Rwanda which may or may not get off the ground and it's going to cost a fortune if it does and it's cost a fortune already. Well we do have a similar problem here in Mallorca and uh, just this week we've had 69 migrants arriving and it's so far this year uh, 754 have arrived in the, the Balearic Islands and those are the ones that have been intercepted. Some may well have arrived here and uh, we've not known about it. If we look back historically, um, if we go back all the way to 2016, in the whole year there were only 22 people that arrived illegally, but that gradually increased and as we got to 2019 was up to 500 and then suddenly it shot up and uh, over the ensuing years right up into 2022 uh, the figures were well over 2,000. So the numbers of migrants appearing on the island have really gone up. They seem to be falling off a little bit uh, last year and this year, but um, and we still get an awful lot of them. Um, I've, on other videos I've talked about the uh, Calvia Book Day, which is uh, going to be celebrated in Palmanova on Saturday, that's the 20th and if you're around Palmanova there's going to be things going on all day starting in the morning going right on through the evening and it's all going to be on the Passage del Mar that's along the front and there'll be lots of different activities uh, they've got some bookstores coming down who are going to be having guests signing their books and there'll be lots of things going on for adults and for children there'll be games, there'll be storytelling and there'll be some workshops for all the family and face painting. Lots of things there, things for sale as well, books as well as roses maybe. And uh, if the weather's good, it could be a spectacular event. Uh, there are going to be some other interesting things. Uh, there's going to be a demonstration of robotics down there. That could be interesting. Uh, and there'll be entertainment. There's going to be a batucada, that's the drummers. They'll be bashing away. And there'll be various things going on on stage. Um, and uh, there's going to be a, in the afternoon at 4pm, uh, Serena's English Puppet Theatre. And uh, no, that's not our daughter Serena, that's another Serena. Uh, and there's going to be a puppet show and that's going to be in English. So get along there, take your children along, I'm sure they're going to have lots of fun uh, at all of the events that are occurring there. Someone asked me uh, just the other day, can you help me? I want to come over for two or three months and I'm looking for somewhere to rent. And there are people are only asking for long-term rents and it's really hard to find anywhere to rent, short-term or long-term. And if you do find somewhere, it's going to be expensive. It's going to be very expensive. Um, well, to compensate for this, the, the Balearic government has made an emergency law and uh, that should within the next 15 days that's really quick uh, create 200 new homes 
um, and these new homes of, of these there 190 of them are going to be special homes with limited prices and the others are going to be what are called VPO these are uh, sold with a, a, an official protection price uh, and that means if you buy a VPO and you must be careful about doing this if you are buying a property in Mallorca some of them are VPO and it means that you cannot resell them at a price higher than is, is named on the deeds so that the deeds will say what the prices are and there will be a slight increase perhaps but uh, you, you have a specific price at which you can sell them uh, so these homes hopefully are going to relieve some of the pressure uh, but it's only it's a drop in the ocean it seems to me um, many of them are in Palma but other municipalities are going to be Marachi, Calvia, Alcudia, San Ren and Felanich. Something that caught my eye, I, I love history and I love everything Roman and Roman and history, the two things lovely go together and we do have lots of that here in Mallorca and uh, some of it apparently is underwater and we have a shipwreck off the Playa de Palma uh, that's been investigated over the past few years but now uh, gets to the stage of recovery. Uh, it's just off the Playa de Palma and uh, the idea there is to uh, remove the shipwreck from the seabed and it will eventually be placed in the San Carlos Museum where it's going to be desalinated. Uh, not only the, the ship itself but and many of the artifacts uh, that are going to be uh, extracted as well, some of them have already been taken away and uh, these include some um, jars which uh, contain things like fermented fish sauces oil, wine, and they are very well preserved apparently and some of them have got some interesting painted inscriptions on them which are some of the best in, uh, in the country, probably best in the Roman Empire. So all of this very excited and once the, uh, the ship has been removed to the San Carlos Museum uh, it's going to undergo this desalination and that's going to take um, 18 months, could take longer uh, but it will be on view uh, to the public, so you'll be able to go along and have a look at it. It's an amazing museum, the San Carlos. It's one that, when I've been, there have been very few visitors there. It's one of the uh, under-visited museums on the island. It's basically a military museum, so there's lots of guns and swords and bullets and knives and cannons and those sorts of things, but I suppose that's the sort of thing that fascinates me. Uh, on Friday we've got Britain's biggest cruise liner coming into port. Uh, it's about 185,000 tonnes, part of the P&O uh, line and it's the Arvia. 185,000 tonnes and 5,000 passengers. It's, uh, it's going to be quite a sight so I'm hoping that uh, weather permitting we'll get down there or I'll get down there and have a look at it. On the sports front, Anita and I sat and watched uh, Rafa Nadal win uh, his first game in a while. He's been injured and he's had quite a lot of time off. So he's fallen considerably down in the rankings, but he was playing in Barcelona, uh, playing a young Italian, Flavio Caboli, and uh, it was the Barcelona Open. And he won it fairly comfortably, 6-2, 6-3, and uh, looks a little bit like the old Rafa Nadal. He said that this is going to be his last season, his last year, and uh, wants to go out with a smile on his face. And well, certainly on Monday night, he had a, a smile on his face. Well done, Rafa. You're a great ambassador for the island of New Yorker. Um, well, uh, to tell you about the results of the Real New Yorker match, Real New Yorker were playing in the Copa del Rey. That's the equivalent of the uh, FA Cup, I suppose and uh, they got to 90 minutes and were drawing, they got to extra time and they were drawing and sadly they lost on penalties. Uh, well, I think it was a great achievement and it was really appreciated by the fans. They've now played their first home game since that and that was against Real Madrid. As you can imagine, that was going to be a really tough match with some of the greatest players in the world playing. And uh, Mallorca held out in the first half in what was a fairly slow game it seemed as though Real Madrid were just playing a little bit with Real Mallorca and into the second half and within a few 
minutes uh, Madrid had scored. It was really strange because we were all looking at it and saying, how did that happen? And the goalkeeper just looked bemused. He didn't move. Uh, he was rooted to his spot. Uh, and then afterwards we discovered that it had taken a deflection and uh, it was just a wicked deflection that caused the, uh, the goal to go in. And uh, Mallorca could do pretty much nothing about that. Well, Mallorca held on till the, till the end of the game and it uh, finished with Madrid winning 1-0. Well, next up we go playing Seville, that's on Monday night, and uh, Seville are only three points ahead of us, so this is a, a game which if we could get something out of this which would be really good for Mallorca, uh, so we'll be watching that probably at home on the TV as we have Ancho coming this weekend. Um, getting back to Real Mallorca, and uh, we've had a problem with the away matches. The way matches we always used to go to the Mallorca Cafe which is part of the ground. But while the Mallorca ground was being renovated, uh, the, the old Mallorca Cafe was uh, changed, <laughs> it was actually changed into the shop. It's now a fantastic shop for the, the club but we don't have the Mallorca Cafe anymore. And so it's meant going to a bar across the road, it's not quite the same uh, when you've got a lot of people there who are not really very interested in football and uh, when, when we cheer <laughs> everybody looks at us and it's a bit strange uh, whereas if you were in the Mallorca cafe everybody's enjoying it everybody's there for the same reason well maybe that is going to be coming to the end for for next season because Mallorca is opening a themed restaurant at Son Moish and looking at some of the pictures I've seen um, which are just uh, illustrative pictures at the moment uh, it's going to be quite a place um, it looks as though it's going to be a quite a nice sports bar restaurant it's described as um, and it's going to be on two floors it's 631 square meters so it's pretty big uh, room for 150 people on the, on the inside and a terrace with 100 people on the outside it's going to have big screens for watching the football um, so something to look forward to, and it should be ready uh, in August, so that means it will be ready for the new season um, in 2024-25. Um, well, we'll see how the progress is on that one. Uh, we look very much forward to seeing it. On the, to finish off on the weather front, we had a wonderful, glorious, uh, sunny weekend. Unfortunately, Anita was not well, so we didn't manage to get out very far and uh, Monday was also very nice it went a little bit cooler on Tuesday and it's still cooler today and uh, well, we've got some blue skies now as Anita came in from knitting earlier on she said it looks like rain well that's obviously blown over but the weather forecast said that we could be getting some rain somewhere on the island today temperatures have dropped significantly I just looked at our thermometer and uh, down to 18 degrees which is okay it's what it should be at this time of the year and pretty much that's what it's going to be for the rest of the, the week. It might creep up a little bit. Uh, we might have a few spots of rain today, tomorrow. Uh, and then it's going to clear up a little bit as we go into the weekend. And then into next week, it's still looking a little bit unsettled. With temperatures hovering around the 20 degree mark. Uh, if it's sunny, that's fine, as long as it's not too windy. Uh, if you're in the shade, it starts to feel a little bit cooler. So that's the news for me for today, so thanks very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.